AI image generation for jokes related to the topic of first female Mexican president. We're now going to imagine that we have the raw material, the rough drafts of jokes around our topic of focus. Remembering that in prior presentations, we discussed a little bit how you might pick your topic of focus, which is a big deal, a huge hurdle for many people because many people often choose a topic that's way too broad and therefore they can't really see the nuts and bol bolts of the constructions and assumptions being made so they can't get the seed ideas to create that incongruity constructing jokes. So we'll touch a little bit on some of those ideas here but you might want to look at that prior presentation to see how we got to these rough draft ideas. Now note that in the creation process as well, you might always be keeping this AI imagery in your mind, which is something that stand-up comedians possibly don't do as much because their art form is working with just them, their acting abilities, their facial expressions, and their words. But when we move into an online situation, we can add to that image, videos, movie clips. So as we create our jokes, we can create a joke that's pretty blasé joke, not even a joke. But if we have a funny image attached to it, funny images being easy to create, funny images used to be something that only cartoonists could really do well and on a consistent basis, having the images mapping out what you create in your mind. But now you can just ask the AI images to do it. So that is a skill that I don't think many people have developed as well, and you can apply it to comedy uh, quite easily. So the our point of topic we're going to imagine is the news headline, the first female Mexican uh, president. So that's going to be the topic that will be built that we have built our seed jokes around. Now also note sometimes I actually build my script first, and then I go back and create the images from it. But you might create the images right after you do the seed ideas because the images themselves might give you an idea to say, oh, that joke wasn't that good. But if you combine that again with the image, then it becomes a lot better. <laughs> now, as we do this, I also kind of want to think about just formatting ideas and how you can get all this stuff compiled in one place so that you can then combine it together using some kind of, of editing software, right? So I have to basically, if I was to edit this, what's going to be my process? I'm going to probably just record my joke and possibly my image if I, if I want to have myself in it. But you don't need to have a video of you if you're going to use AI images, but you might. And then on top of that, I'm going to layer the, the AI images that I'm going to search for and then possibly include like movie clips on top of that or cut in between them. So that means that I want to file my images kind of related to the jokes that I'm having here as well in some way. And I might talk more about filing systems later, which is kind of the boring part of joke creation, but it's kind of pretty important to try to organize all your all your funny thoughts, right? Money, everybody has funny thoughts, but they can't really recall the funny thoughts and put them into like a story or a narrative because they're all over the place. So in any case, the, the first technique we used in ChatGTP to help seed our ideas to create jokes was just to say, hey, look, here's my headline, uh, chat GTP, here's my prompt, list 50 explicit and implicit propositions or assumptions from this phrase, Mexico's first female president. And then basically, we just got this list from chat GTP. So, right, we went over here to chat GTP and it gave us just this list of of uh, propositions. Now remember the idea is all you have to do is break a proposition and that's a joke and usually it's the implicit ones. If I say anything you have to make all kinds of implicit assumptions and all we have to do is build a story that breaks that image in someone's mind that they were forced to create to make a logical story about whatever was said and that's what causes the incongruity. All right so what it gave uh, well, actually, so this one was Mexico has elected a president who is now first again, I know I'm getting into the Mexican president's thing. I don't know anything about Mexican politics other than, you know, I'm in California right now. So I know, you know, cartels are kind of a problem. I know the drug things kind of a problem on my end uh, of things, but I don't know anything else about, you know, Mexican politics. So, uh, you know, 
for I ask forgiveness up front. So I might be t- touching on things I have no idea what I'm talking about, but I need to let my mind kind of flow because that's how you come up with the jokes and then maybe edit it later so that you don't say something stupid and get canceled or whatever, or whatever right? So I, I ask forgiveness up front. Not permission, mind you. I ask forgiveness up front. So here we go. If you ask permission, you can't do anything. So that's what we, here we go. In other words, if I simply use the headline as my setup, Mexico's first female president, we have all kinds of implicit and explicit assumptions, assertions, propositions related to that, such as Mexico is a country, Mexico has a democratic republic system, the Mexican people elected with a majority to elect a president, the president happened to be female, and so on and so forth. I can break one of those possibly by implying that it wasn't a fair election by saying, well, actually the cartels put her there. The implication being that maybe it's not a democratic republic, maybe the cartels just crowned someone as their figurehead, or maybe she's leading the cartels or something like that. Again, I don't know all the politics of of, uh, Mexican politics, but the idea here is just we have assertion and then we broke the assertion. Now, that might not be really funny in and of itself. People might not even get that, but if you add an image to it, then it becomes much more clear and oftentimes much more funny. So I'm using chat GPT-4, which you would have to pay for. It's not the free version, but it's using the same kind of ground-based system as Copilot. So this is another tool that you can use if you have Microsoft products, and this one might be free to you if you have Microsoft product suites. I'm gonna use the the chat GPT, however, just because that's what I'm more used to here. So we have I prompted it, give me an image of Mexican cartel gangster crowning a female president. That's the image I came up to. Again, I'm not trying to, I don't know anything about Mexican politics or anything. I just know the cartels are bad. That's all I know in California here, but in any case, and then it gave me this image, right? And, and it's notice it said, I can create an image based on your, your description. Uh, let's clarify a few details. And I'm just like, yeah, just, just give it a shot, right? And this is what it first gave me. It's like, that's not really what I was looking for. So I said, I want a gangster crowning a female president in a satirical way, like a comedian, like you might see in a comic cartoon on you know the, the Sunday newspaper. And this is what it gave me. Now, again, I'm not... I don't, there could be all kinds of things that I have no idea that this is implying about, you know, uh, in Mexican politics. I have no idea, but uh, that's what, that's what I have here. Now, now, if you wanted to use that, then I save that over here as an AI image. So I just basically downloaded it. I put it into my folder in my AI art images. And then it also, when it saves in this particular program, you'll notice that the style of the file, I have to open it up and say save as, and you can see it's as a a .webp file. And that doesn't pull into my editing software, I use Camtasia. So I usually then have to save it as a JPEG, that's what I typically save it as, and then I change the name of it from this long name here, which often also messes up me being able to import it to a number. So I put a number on it, and so I'm going to say, I'm going to use that one. And again, <laughs> and so if I was going to use that one, I could just put it, and then I put the number next to the joke I'm in. So if I wrote a script, then I'm going to put the number here, and I usually highlight the number so I can refer to the image that is tied into my joke idea, which again might make the joke somewhat plausible, whereas the joke itself would not otherwise be. So are you, are you sure she's female? You never can tell these days with the LGTP. So you could infer, well, she's not actually a woman. You can't even tell who is a woman. Are, is there any such thing as a woman? I don't even know. But she, what's a glass ceiling? How can women have a glass ceiling when there's no such thing as a woman in the first place? It's crazy. So now we, so we could say a ma- image of a Mexican president who is a man dressed like a woman is what I tried to do. And then it said, I don't know if I could do that. And I said, give it a shot. And then... <laughs> And I thought this was pretty funny. So again, this whole, <laughs> this whole that that whole thing might not be like you could say. Ah, I'd roll my eyes. At, I'm in California, so we get this kind of stuff all the time. I, you might just roll your eyes at it, but you get that image, and it's kind of funny. Like now that that made it kind of funny, even though I'm kind of sick of the, of this whole playing on the you know is she a woman thing, but that. <laughs> 
I, I, again, I don't know anything about Mexican politics, but I think it came up with a pretty funny image. So if you add that, if you if you add that to it, then what was a pretty lame joke could be somewhat more funny, it seems to me. And if you put these in a series, in a story, then you could tell a pretty nice little story with just images, kind of like a kind of like a cartoon or like a comic book, but it's actually reeling like a like a little cartoon image because you're drawing it not with by hand but with the ai imagery so this is the first time a female has held the presidency in mexico that's an assumption first female president that means she's the first woman as a president but you can break that assumption you can say well except the last dude's wife basically held indirectly by clutching the tightly to his pearls or something right yeah, not really, because the last guy's wife was running the country, right? <laughs> Is what, what I'm trying to say on that implication. Again, I, I don't know anything. Actually, I'm just that's just a joke. I just made it up. I don't know anything actually about the presidents of, of uh, Mexico too much. I should know more. I'm just, I'm an ignorant American around the rest of the world, you know? So, I mean, so in any case, we put this here. If I put this in, I tried to make an image of... Uh, give me an image of a man of a man Mexican president getting bossed around by his wife. So now his he, I'm imagining that's the last president and the wife is the one telling him what to do. <laughs> right? And again, that might not be like, you know, I just think that and here's the image in here. And then I gave it a number. So I numbered that. So that might not be true or anything. But, you know, I'm just trying to create a story with it. That's the story I had in my mind, which might make that a little bit more funny. So I put the number next to it. If I write a script, then I'll put this in here and then I'll put the number next to it so I don't read this in my script. But then when I do the editing, I can easily refer back to this number and basically add that into my editing process. So Mexico is a country with a, president, a presidential system of government. So you could say uh, no, that's an assumption that's being made when you say first female president, right? You're assuming they're a democratic republic with a presidential system of, of government like a, a, a republic, right? And you could, you could break that assumption and say, yeah, well, not, it's not really a democratic republic or whatever. Again, I don't know anything about it. I'm just trying to say that's how you could break the assumption. So, uh, so I tried to say image of a mixed president whipping a poor Mexican person, right? And, that, and then and they said, you can't do that because that's that's violence or whatever but i'm trying to do it like a cartoon image right like the rich person is is basically abusing the poor person to try to have a satirical idea like they do all the time in the comics to show that it's it's there's really a hierarchical system but i because chat gtp or chat gpt uh is is really sensitive and stuff they won't let you do those kind of cartoon images which again in actual magazines you see all the time right or in newspapers the newspaper cartoons are quite violent bugs bunny gets shot in the face donald Don, you know the, the the right you see that all the time so the point is that, so so again it's going to you're going to you're going to hit some hurdles depending on the current you know politics of chat gpt right so it's, they're going to be politically correct and they're trying to limit their but you can usually work around it so here i said make an image of a Mexican president looking down their nose at a poor person. And so that's, I'm trying to make the same image basically saying, well, is it really a democratic republic or whatever? And again, I'm not trying to insinuate that Mexi what Mexican government is. This is common thing in American politics to insinuate that it wasn't a democratic process or there's, there's a hu huge disparity between the rich and the poor and so on and so forth. Again, I numbered it. And so I can go back to it. The role of the president in Mexico is significant enough to be noteworthy. So you could you could break that assumption. The first female president, and you could basically say, yeah, who cares, right? Now again, in the examples I looked at, I looked at Gutfield. I think did that basically. He said, this is the first female president, and he said, who cares? Not to the president of Mexico, but to her being female, because again, we in America we've seen that a lot, and he played that we've seen the the playing up of well it's a historic event just because of her gender where i think the reaction a lot of times here is women are doing great i mean women have, have broken glass ceilings you know 
we'd like to see people hired based on merit rather than hearing about their gender, right? I, I want to see the first, the greatest president of Mexico in a long time who has improved the, the quality of life for all of America and possibly the world, and I don't care what her gender is, right? <laughs> that, if that was the story, I'd be far happier, right? Whatever, and if she happened to be a woman, great, whatever. But so, but it doesn't, but you can also do that in here. Notice I tried to make an image of a person shrugging their shoulders. Now this one doesn't look great to me because you know he's a white dude shrugging his shoulders about a, a female Mexican president. Probably that's the kind of thing that's gonna get me in trouble over here, right? So I gotta have a, he's gotta be like a cartoon image. So this one, I tried to give, give me a guy shrugging his shoulders, he doesn't care. But this one again is too wacky for me. I tried to give him again, just say regenerate it, give me another one. And I, I ended up with this one, which again, I don't really like much. I would probably keep on going if I wanted to play with this. But here's, but the, it's a white guy, but he looks so stupid that people can't call me a bigot really because he's because he looks like an idiot. So 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 he who cares, right? <laughs> this is going to be the idea. So again, if you wanted to, so if you were going to use that, you could pull that in here, uh, and then again, I numbered it over here, and then I put that in in here, and then I can refer back to it. So the election process in Mexico allows the fe allows for female candidates. So obviously, if the premise is, if the headline is first female president, there's an implicit assumption that a, they allow women to run for president. And, and obviously in America, we'd say, yeah, that makes it, you know, that's not, un but you could try to try to break that assumption and say something like, yeah, who let these women in here, right? What's going on with this? I didn't know the, I didn't know the women folk could be running the election. You could, que paso aquí, una chica en esta, I don't know, I'm, I've been practicing my Spanish here. I've been practicing Spanish for 20 years. I can't, I can't really get it. I tried to practice with, with uh, Star Wars, you know. Luke, yo soy tu padre. No, busca tu sentimiento, sabes es verdad. No puedes, but then they, the, then Star Wars got lame. And then I, now I've lost my motivation to practice. But in any case. You got so if we had that one, we could we can pull that in here and say. Uh, so so now I'm trying to say I wrote my prompt here. Uh, image of a snobby rich Mexican pointing disapprovingly at a woman, right? So I'm trying to say here's all the rich, you know, patriarchal Mexicans that are pointing at the woman and saying, "What does she do? Who let this? Who let this chica?" in la casa por qué and then, <laughs> sorry sorry about that i'm using my spanglish i'm combining i'm combining together my skills of being able to portray a rich american white patriarchal male and a rich corrupt political mexican patriarchal male with my patriarchal spanish english spanglish qué paso aquí con esta chica Dios míos, Dios for the love of God, míos. Y también, el presidente de México necesita un nombre que termina en un O, o tal vez un E, pero no un M, tal vez un N, pero no un M. I, try, I tried to say that the president's last name should end in an O or an A. Isn't that because that's like how most people do. but her name ends in an M, which is somewhat un, unusual. I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking again. I'm going to stop now. Anyways, we got so they're pointing to the this one. And then the election of a female president in Mexico might inspire other nations. That would be assumption. Why are you telling me that? Oh, it's the first female president of Mexico. Well, it must be because they're given the assumption that maybe the first female president of Mexico will inspire other people to have to put women in higher positions of power seems to be kind of like the theme over here in, in America, which I'm not totally against. I'm just I'm kind of just sick of it being all based on, you know, that kind of thing, just based on race and gender, as if that's the quality to hire people. It seems kind of annoying, but I get kind of the gist of it. In any case, given if we break that assumption, given the fact that Mexico is run by cartels, having a female president elected may be a bad sign for other countries. In other words, you could say, well, they hired a first female president in Mexico. That's great. But I'm, 
I'm trying to give the implication as though she's leading the cartels. Maybe she's the boss woman of the cartels, which doesn't sound good to me. I don't care if she's a if she's a woman and she's corrupt and leading cartels to to, you know, put people on drugs or something or push China's drugs over here or whatever, then that's not good. Right. So I tried to make an image of a female Mexican leader ordering a group of thugs looking like gangsters. So now she's the she's the president, but she's ordering around. She's ordering. She's leading the cartel thugs. Right. So that so some people might like that. I don't know. But I would that would be so. But again, I'm not <laughs> before I get in trouble with this. I don't know anything about Mexican politics. I don't. She doesn't look like a lady that's leading around the cartels in actuality. But I'm just trying to find ways to break that assumption. And then and and then these are common things you might see in like a political cartoon or something like that on the Sunday papers where you're exaggerating something and then you can make your own cartoon image with it. Right. So then we had all these and then I did my list technique. So same thing with these lists. We had these two ideas that I'm trying to put together. And again, the images can really make these come together because you're trying to put two things side by side that don't make sense. Like this lady's name, she had a first name that was uh, Mexican and a last name that was sounded Jewish. And some of the comedians put together like food dishes, like a Mexican food dish and a Jewish food dish that don't, and they put them on top of each other, like a taco and a Mexican and a, and a Jewish food on top of each other, which didn't look right. But the imagery, right, that's what made it kind of funny. So you can do things here that's like, ah, that's not funny, really, but I see how you're trying to make a joke. But if you put an image on it and the image hits, then it can be kind of funny. So beauty and brains becomes beauty, brains and power. So that's pretty stupid. That's not even really a joke. But if you put an image on it, you could you can make a story out of it. Right. So here she is. She's running the cartels again. <laughs> she, she's the she's the boss lady of the cartel. OK, so beauty. So so here's beauty, brains and power. So now I put she's in charge here. And I started this out with a woman. So I, so I said, so you could say, give me a beautiful Mexican woman in a dress. And they give me a beautiful Mexican woman in a dress. And then I said, give me a brain. Uh, and then you can't see the brain. And then I said, give me the person in a seat, right? So even though that was a pretty lame, if you want to even call it a joke, you can make a story out of it, which makes it look kind of interesting, even if not exactly funny, right? Beauty and brains and if you see this in a movie beauty then brains becomes beauty brains and power to this image right so just that quick little you can make almost like a cartoon beauty brains becomes beauty brains and power right and and you and you can animate that in a movie which again i think adds a little bit to it so hell hath no fury like the scorn of a woman president so so that might not be hell hath no fury is a common phrase. But if you put the woman president in it. So now I had like this one. So <laughs> again, it, it does it like hell hath no fury like a woman scorn. Hell hath no fury like the scorn of a female president. I think the image is a little bit funny, right? I mean, you know, it might it might draw a laugh where the words itself might not. Right. So you can forget about that presidential pardon. So I tried to put a tagline on because the female president has a woman scorn. And so we're going to say, OK, I tried to get a female. So now she's looking stoically and she's not pardoning the, the prisoner or something like that. Again, I, I don't know anything about I'm just I'm just trying to say, how can we put an image on there? And and I'm just telling a story which probably relates more to American politics than uh, Mexican politics, because again, I don't know a lot about Mexican politics. So the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. So the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world literally as commander in chief. So you could say from just position to images, I could say here's an, a woman rocking the cradle or with her baby in a cradle. And then next, here's the women ruling the world, right? So you have all these. So this is the image, right? Or you can have her rocking the world in a cradle. So now you have a the, these women are ruling the world. There's not a man in sight. Looks like a Disney movie. Looks like Disney Star Wars right here. 
And then we've got a woman's place is in the home. A woman's place is in the home uh, at the Oval Office. So now we've added at the Oval Office. So again, you can tell a story with that. I could say, notice I could reuse images 250 and then 180 because I numbered them. So I could say, okay, I already have a woman's place is in the home because she's rocking the cradle. A woman's place is in the home at the Oval Office. And then I can try it and then I can match that one with this one, right? So I can repeat images just like they do in cartoons. We use the same script and uh, repeat some images. So then we've got uh, veto power. I want this one. The buck stops here. Some mother hen has flown into the mother hen has flown in right to the west wing so that's pretty lame but right the mother hen has flown in to the west wing but you got wings you got a hen and she's flying so i can get a mental picture and it's kind of funny but if you put an image on it then you're like okay mother hen is flowing in and then and then maybe i make a picture of like the Oval Office, they, they wouldn't let me write any more images because I made too many. But then you can make a picture of like the office and, and instead of, you could combine the pictures, right? I could take this hen, remove the background and put her on the desk of the Oval Office or something like that. So then I'm just saying you don't need two separate images. I could say if I'm telling a story, the mother hen, I can make a picture of a mother hen and then have the mother hen in the Oval Office, where I just crop this image of the mother hen that flew in is now sitting on the desk of the Oval Office. Again, that's pretty stupid, but it's kind of funny. It's kind of a funny image, even if it makes no real kind of sense. And you can tell, and so, so it could be kind of funny just to add uh, the stories with it. So some of these, like I say, might have been uh, uh, not politically correct at all. And so you have to be careful with that as well to try to go in here and, and make them. Mo this one I thought was funny. Most cabinet meetings are about cabinets, literally. So right, because she's the female president. So most of the cabinet meetings are about cabinets, literally. And you can imagine getting a picture of the president pointing or standing with a cabinet maker, just a normal, you know, working man. And she's pointing at the cabinets that need to be that she wants to have replaced or something like that again i think the image could add a little bit to make that uh, a little bit more funny and we had some more what why did the female president bring a ladder to work she heard the glass ceiling was pretty high up so you can imagine that image and make an image with that what's the female president's favorite part of a computer the motherboard so all of these little puns you can actually make an image of them that's kind of funny She's a real executive lady. Da, 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 da. So in any case, that's the general idea.